More than 100 years of family farm history begins in the Garden Peninsula with a tragedy. Local 3's Jessica Gosca takes us to the Piscadna Centennial Farm. In the early 1900s, a Lithuanian farmer named Charles was swindled out of his $800 life savings when he purchased what he thought was 40 acres of farmland, complete with a house and a barn, in the Garden Peninsula. He arrived by wagon to his new property, which turned out to be mostly woodland, not farmland. If that wasn't bad enough, guess what? There was no house and no barn. The only good news is he had about three to four months to get ready for winter. Charles wasn't alone in his misfortune. About 15 other families in the area had the same experience, and their only option was to tough it out and try to survive. We've been up here surviving for 110 years after that. Steve Jr. Piscadna is Charles's grandson. He now owns what has become the Piscadna Centennial Farm. My grandfather bought this 160 acres in 1929. And on this property was the Hennessy School. And they closed it in 1930. But all the local kids that were in these 15 families, most of them attended school on that school. That Hennessy School was here on the property right on the east line. This was the woodshed to that school. And in 1930, they moved the school right by our old high school down there, and they used it for elementary school and for a number of years, and I went to school there too for a little while. And education-wise, our small school and garden was real good, and I was very lucky. I graduated in the top 10 of my class. But people always question that because there was only nine people in the class. But I still made the top 10, so <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Growing up, Steve Jr. says life on the farm was hard work. For more than 50 years, his grandfather and parents, Josephine and Steve Sr., made their income milking cows. Until they and Steve Jr. built the Grade A milk house in 1952, they milked those cows by hand. You know, milk cows twice a day, morning and night, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There was no, no days off, anything like that. So I got my calculator out a few weeks ago and calculated out a few milk cows twice a day, 365 days a year in 50 years. 15 cows to 25 cows for most of those years. The total for those 50 years is about 850, 900,000 cows that they milked. That is a lot of cows. But when the cows came in, they had to, they had to tie them up individually. Put this around each cow you had to go through and chain them up so they were each stand. And each cow had their own, you know, own necklace to tie up in the things. When we had to get water to our cows, each two cows had to share a drinking fountain. There was no individual drinking fountain, they had to share. So there was one there, and then there was one here for these two cows. And, and he, we had smart cows. You know how we had smart cows? Whenever they come in the barn, each one knew where they had lived. If you were down there, this stall, that stall, they all automatically, after a day or two, teaching them, they knew right where to go for years. They went right to that spot. The worst day milking cows, you know what it is? They milked those cows for 40, 50 years. My mother said one morning, my, uh, my father and her woke up and they had like the flu. They had the flu, they were vomiting, had diarrhea, and they still had to go and milk the cows. That was a, that's why she kept telling me, don't be a farmer. 
Steve Jr. didn't heed his mother's warning. Today, he and his three children manage the Centennial Farm, and they plan to keep the farm in the family for future generations. The original farmhouse burned down, though, after a bolt of lightning struck the attic one summer night in 1968. If it hadn't been for the farm dog Corky, Steve Jr. and his parents may have lost their lives to the smoke. The farm dog Corky was sleeping in the porch, opened up the door because it was an old handle that he just had to press down, not one that turned us. So somehow the dog opened it up, went in there, my father was sleeping with his arm out, and he said all of a sudden he could feel something touching his hand. So we woke up, when he sat up in bed, all I could smell was smoke. My parents were able to grab their pair of trousers and a pair of shoes and escape with Corky out the back door. And they said if it hadn't have been for him, they would have most likely died because nobody would have woken them up. The whole house was just a pile of rubble. That was certainly a dark day in Piscodna family history, but there were good days on the farm too. In 1945, electricity came to the farm, and Steve Jr. remembers that day as a highlight of his youth. I was like almost five years old, and I can still remember my parents some one night saying, go over to the wall and put the switch on. I didn't even know what a switch was at that time, but I put it on and the whole room lit up. Another major event that happened in 1949, my father wanted to buy a sawmill. So there was a sawmill for sale at an auction sale, and he went there and purchased that sawmill for about $400. The sawmill was where those trees are back there. Took him about three weeks to get it framed up, put the foundation under it to get it to work. And I was in school most of the time, but the day they were going to operate, they had a couple other people come over to help them. One person had to put the logs on the, the flame. One had to take the slabs off. One took the lumber off. And my father said, okay, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. And, I, and I'm waiting there anxiously. Finally, I said, what am I going to do? And you know what my father said? You are going to the house. And he pointed back at the house. And you know what my mother was doing? She was standing by the house, waving her arm, but I fixed them. You know what I did? All the way back to the house, I cried really loud. <laughs> That's a true story. 27 years that sawmill sat on the Piscadena property until Steve Sr. donated it in 1979 to the Upper Peninsula Steam and Gas Association. It is now on annual display at the UP State Fair. So part of the family farm history lives on today in the public eye. It may have been hard work growing up on the farm. But look how, how great it was. The community was very nice to grow up in. You always felt part of the community in a small town back in the 50s. And I guess I had good parents. I still got all my fingers and hands and toes and everything else. So you heard a lot of accidents in those days where People lost their hand or their fingers and all that stuff in sawmills, so I have to give my parents a lot of credit. Reporting from the Piscadena Centennial Farm and Garden, this is Jessica Gosca, Local 3 News.